you hear those agonal gasps, those deep breaths. They sound like their breaths, but you know, as soon as you hear them, you know it's a, it's a bad sign. It was just a normal Thursday. We were helping a class and a member runs in, says there's an emergency on the gym floor. So I run out and see John on the floor. You don't need any first aid training to see something was, was not right. You spring into action, one of the members started performing CPR whilst I set up the defib. A colleague of mine ran the ambulance straight away, who were brilliant as well, very, very calm, um, precise, clear in their instructions of what they wanted. I can't really remember it too much because there was so much going on. You're just, you're just fixed on, on one thing, on John. So I couldn't hear anything, really see anything else. It was like tunnel vision on that, on that one individual. Uh, my first recollection is uh, like a trance-like state at the, uh, towards the end of January. Kyle's fast action with the defibrillator restarted my heart, which allowed me to, uh, to, to make it to hospital, which is you know, one of the key milestones, is getting people from that uh, moment of arrest to hospital, where they can be uh, treated by the, um, by, you know, by the medical teams. It's, it is you know, that vital first aid and first, first actions made all the difference. And this can happen anywhere at home, and most of them do have it at home, to family members. So, you know, your, your actions are going to be the difference between life and death. They've got nothing to lose. You know, if they'd failed to take any action, they would certainly have died. They were willing to, uh, to give it a go. Even if you were uh, even if you learn this skill just once, it can set you up to save someone's life, just a once.